I'm in my third year of language learning. And for me, one of the biggest game changers has been language exchanges. Now, I am not a super extroverted person, so I needed a lot of help from my polyglot friends. In this video, I have assembled for you the best tips I have ever found from other polyglots about language exchanges. If you're unsure as to whether you want to video call a stranger and exchange languages with them, this is the stuff that's going to help you succeed. And I promise it'll help you because it's helped me tremendously. Los Gates. My initial inspiration for doing language exchanges came from my friend Elizabeth. She gave a talk at the 2019 Women in Language online conference about how to do an amazing language exchange. Elizabeth is actually a language coach with a fluent in three months people. So she knows what she's talking about. And this one piece of advice a year and a half after she gave her talk is something that we still talk about with my friends about how you can really find a good language exchange partner. So here's Elizabeth. Hello, Marissa. Thank you for asking me. I think language learning is a metaphor for life. For me, because I learned a language later in life, I trained translated my joy of living into language learning. And one of the things that I do is language exchanges. I love them. And I learned quickly to do two things, weed my garden and go where the sunshine is. What does that mean? Well, that means that if someone is not a fit for me, they get out of my garden. They're not necessarily a weed. They're just not the flower that I want in my landscape. So I will just gently say, thanks so much. Maybe we're not a fit. I might say we're not a fit, or I might just say, when I have more time, I'll give you a call, which in that case then, I might never have time for that person. The type of people that I weed from my garden, people that are uh, excessively late all the time, people that don't respect my time, I respect theirs, so it's important for them to respect mine. People that are overly critical, not helping me with corrections, but you know, telling me that I'm doing things wrong all the time. And in terms of going where the sunshine is, I look for language exchange partners that are not exactly like me, but that lift me up that when I'm done speaking with them, I feel like I'm a better person. I feel like we've laughed together, we've connected, we had a good time. Those things are essential for me because for me, language is all about connection. If I'm not connecting with someone, if I'm not feeling comfortable in a very vulnerable place, especially when I'm a beginner in a target language, speaking in that language is a very vulnerable place. You know, I'm making lots of mistakes. I'm not as articulate as I am in English. And so I need someone there that's gonna be gentle with me. I need to go where the sunshine is. If someone makes me feel fabulous when I speak that language, I'm going to want to speak it more. With that being said, I try not to be a weed. I show up on time. I make sure that I have an extra set of headphones in case my headphones bail if I'm late, because it does happen. I apologize. I let that person know that it won't happen again and the steps that I'm going to take to make sure it doesn't happen again. And I also attempt to be the sunshine for them as well. So I might say something like, wow, Wow, you know, today your introduction with me was spot on. You did a great job. I make sure that I let them know that they're making progress and that in turn allows them to return the favor when, when there is uh, feedback that they want to give that's positive to me. So good luck with your language learning. Now, the first step is obviously going to be finding language exchange partners. How do you do that? An awesome polyglot and Instagrammer, Kina, has an idea for you. To find language exchange partners, she uses the app HelloTalk. But when she originally mentioned this to me, I told her the truth. I'm super hesitant to do a language exchange with somebody I don't know. And I honestly don't wanna get spammed by a million creepy dudes on an app. Her tip is to use the app to make sure your profile is unlisted. Then what you can do is go through other people's profiles, see if you might have stuff in common, and then send them a really good message stating what your goals for a language exchange would be. In that message, you can talk about things you like to talk about, your levels, your languages, your goals, and stuff you might like to talk with them about in your own native language. Now, what I've done in Instead, especially for the popular languages they speak, like Spanish and French, is use Instagram to make friends first. Then when I've built a cool relationship with somebody online, talking about languages and memes and all that and comments and DMs, I'll eventually approach them and say, hey, I want to do this. Do you want to do it with me? You don't 
both need to be native speakers of the language. I love doing Spanish exchanges with my other friends who also have high levels of Spanish. And that way, when we come into a new word, if none of us knows it, we can just look it up and learn together. I really like this because we build a relationship outside of the language exchange and that way the language exchange flows a lot smoother. The fourth tip I have from you is from two of my language exchange partners. Suzanne and Kara turned me on to the best thing ever. That's not so much a language exchange. It's an online study hall, kind of like a co-working session if you've ever done that before. Now I use these a lot in my second month of relearning my native language. And if you want to follow me on that journey, you can check out that playlist. But the idea is you all log on to Zoom together. In the first two or three minutes, just state your intentions and what you're going to do for an hour. Then you mute yourselves and without leaving your desk, just study, study, study. Now you can do whatever you want during this time. With Karen and Suzanne, we generally work on Slavic languages together. Karen and I do our Polish, Suzanne does her Russian. But you don't have to have languages that have anything in common for this to work. In the last few minutes, you all unmute yourselves and summarize what you worked on that out. What's really cool though, is that if you study the same languages, you can actually teach everybody what you just learned. I also like to try to present a few sentences since I'm still a beginner in my own native language, which is a whole thing. But this way I have like a second of speaking practice since I'm still far off from having a conversation in my Polish. These Zoom study halls have been the best and I highly recommend them. You can even do your languages while somebody else who doesn't study languages is doing a work from home session. Okay, the final language exchange tip I have from you comes from my friend Ingrid, who blogs at secondhalftravels.com and is the best person. All of the people in this video are actually the best people. Language people are fantastic. Ingrid is one of my French exchange partners. And a few months ago, because we're all in quarantine, we ran out of stuff to talk about. I've known Ingrid for a few years. And so we just got sick of asking, what did you do this week? Nothing, I'm locked in my house. What are you doing this week? Nothing, I'm locked in my house. Nobody's doing anything this week. Nobody's doing anything any week. So one thing Ingrid suggested was that we use big lists of questions. That way at every language exchange, we could have a different topic to talk about and also really push ourselves outside of our vocabulary comfort zones. In fact, this has been going so well for us. I have made a massive list of questions for language exchanges. All of these questions are multicultural. They can be done with people living in the same country or in different countries. And they're also really thoughtful about people who come from other cultures, other class backgrounds, other religions. And so you should be able to feel comfortable asking anybody any of these questions. There's over 400 on this list and I'm still adding them as we think of them. Here's how you use it. Every question is sorted by difficulty of grammar. So if you're relatively new to the language, you can stick to the A-level questions. A as in the common European framework reference questions levels. Common European framework reference levels. B is generally conversational or fluent. You'll be mixing up different tenses, past, present, future, as well as talking about some hypothetical scenarios. C is where it gets really complicated and you start talking about things that didn't happen, could happen, might have happened, will have happened. So C is for advanced learners. Every week you can just pick a different topic if you want or kind of jump around and go back and forth with you and your language exchange partner asking and answering questions. So if I ask the question, what was your favorite favorite food when you were 10, my language exchange partner will answer it and then I'll answer it after. With Ingrid and I, we do our whole session in French since we're relatively advanced learners. However, if you're doing two languages, so you're switching your native language to somebody else's native language, just spend the first half of the conversation in one language and then at 30 minutes on the dot, change to the other language. You can keep the same conversation flowing throughout the hour and still use the questions. Just spend the first 30 minutes in one language and the second 30 minutes in the other language. Okay, those were my favorite language exchange tips I've ever gotten from other polyglots. If you have other tips, please leave them in the comments. I'm gonna link to all of my language exchange questions in the video description. If I see awesome ideas in the comments, I'll also add some of those into the blog article with the questions. So there you have it. Happy language learning and make sure to check out the playlists on this channel for a bunch more ideas.